I wanted this video to be about showing off how quickly you can learn 20 new words. So I'm going to do 20 words on this Quizlet website for the GRE, the link in the description. And you might say, well, what if I already know a few of the words? Well, I'm going to also try to briefly explain some of the words you see along the bottom because we have a multi-choice question with four different answers. So if I see an interesting word or two at the bottom, I'll throw those in for free as well. So hopefully you end up learning about 20 new words. So let's see how long that takes us. Our first word. We have to pick a word that means wordy and long-winded or garrulous. And the answer here is verbose. Someone who is verbose talks a lot. They are garrulous, which also means chatty, talking a lot. Wordy and long-winded. Long-winded is, again, a funny way of saying they speak a lot. I guess they need to breathe in and then use that air to speak for a long time. They're long-winded, they're garrulous. As a bonus fact, somatic means to do with the body. Like you might have heard of the phrase psychosomatic, which is where the mind influences the body. If someone tells you that you're ill, you start actually feeling a bit ill. That's psychosomatic, mind, body. So somatic means to do with the body and corporeal also means to do with the body. I don't know if you've heard of that word ethereal, which means to do with the spirit or something that's non-physical, that's ethereal. But something to do with the body is corporeal. That's number four. But here, the correct answer is verbose, number three. Now, I won't always explain that number of words because I'm aiming for 20 in total. So let's do this one. A situation or predicament from which disentanglement proves difficult. A swamp or a marsh. Quagmire. So a quagmire is a physical swamp that you might see in certain countries. But more generally, we use that word to say a difficult situation we can't escape from. So you enter into a war and maybe you can't end the war because the enemy keeps fighting back, that might be called a quagmire. Or you start a project at work, you think it'll take a week, but a month later you're still only halfway through, that's a bit of a quagmire. It's proven more difficult than you thought. It's a bit of a swamp you can't escape from. Any other words here that I find interesting? Aboriginal means to do with a people who were originally there in the land. That's an Aboriginal group. They are original to that land, they originate there. While an accretion is something we add on to something, something that gets added on to what was existingly there. That's an accretion. Either way, the best word by far, quagmire. Think mire at the end, like a marsh. And being bogged down, quagged down, quagmire. Okay. Disorder, unkempt, disarranged. I would say that would be disheveled. If someone is disheveled, usually you're describing maybe a man and they haven't shaved for a long time, they've got a beard, they look maybe a bit like homeless or something, that's disheveled. I just think of it as not having shaved, disheveled. So it's usually a physical description of someone who's let themselves go a bit, unkempt. So to be unkempt, you haven't looked after yourself, you haven't kept yourself clean and hygienic, you are unkempt. Notice there isn't actually a word kempt. There's just the word unkempt. So you don't describe someone as kempt if they're looking good. You're just unkempt if you're not looking good. Any other words here? Sardonic means sarcastic in a mocking kind of way. Easy to remember. Sardonic, sarcastic. Unseemly would be inappropriate to the situation. It doesn't seem nice given what they deserved. It's unseemly, that's rude, that's inappropriate. By the way here, unkempt, disarranged, usually a physical description of someone who looks disheveled. To chew, to reduce to a pulp by squashing or compressing. Hmm, masticate. Masticate is a very fancy way of saying to chew. Any other words here that are interesting? Lacerate is to wound someone. If someone received a lot of lacerations, a lot of cuts, and wounds that maybe bleed. That's to lacerate or to receive lacerations. To jettison is to get rid of something. If you throw your mobile phone off the ship, 
In anger, you have jettisoned it, you've abandoned it, you've thrown it off. Maybe you can think of like a jet flying off from Earth while throwing something away and abandoning it. It's jetting off, jettison, you're jettisoning it. But here, just a very fancy word. Really, you wouldn't use this in conversation because it's too fancy. But if you really want to show off with your language, you'd say to chew is to masticate. Lacking power or ability, incapable, lacking in physical strength. That would be impotent. Potent means power, so impotent, lacking power. Rapid to apprehend or understand. Perspicacious? Ah, no, because that would also mean quick to understand. Astute. Someone who is astute picks things up quickly and is quick or rapid to comprehend, apprehend, understand. They are astute. You could think of the as at the beginning as like being fast to understand, astute. Aghast means to be shocked. Maybe like you've seen a ghost. If you've seen a ghost, you're gonna be shocked and appalled. Well, aghast means the same thing. You are shocked or appalled. It's not just shocked as in being surprised, like there could be good news, no, aghast is always a bad thing. She looked at the corpse aghast, like shocked, not expecting it. Now, jejun is an interesting one. I believe it means naive and something that a young person would do and knew, but I would have to check that. Just going to quickly check what jejun means so we can add that to the list of words. Yeah, naive, simplistic, innocent, like a young person would be, jejun. Have you heard of the word juvenile, the young person? Well, they might behave in a jejun way. Very fancy word though. But here, the main word I want you to know is rapid to understand means astute. Characterized by trivial fault finding. Someone who is pedantic, you could say. Pedantic would be a great word for that. Someone who just finds faults easily. Trivial is like small faults. But another way of saying that would be carping. Just complaining, always finding faults, they are carping. A fun bonus word would be pugnacious. That means aggressive, combative, like a pug, like a dog pug. I guess pug dogs aren't really aggressive, but either way, if you imagine a pug dog as being very aggressive, that is a pugnacious dog, and that's what the word means. But here, if you complain a lot, you are carping. Oh, they have given me a score already. I hoped it would continue. Perfect start, keep it up. Okay, well, that's good, I guess. <laughs> I thought it would just carry on forever, but okay, let's just continue. Good to know I've got it perfect so far. A person who has abandoned his or her political party is an apostate. State is the orthodox thing, right? That's the state. An app is leaving it. So leaving that state of belief or leaving that party, you're an apostate. Any other word here that's good? Dotage is like old age, getting senile. Opportunist is an insult about someone who just takes their opportunities, takes advantage of the situation, but it's an insult. It's not a compliment where you're saying that person takes their opportunities. It's just saying someone who takes advantage of the circumstances. That's an opportunist. But anyway, here, apostate. Caustic or sarcastic. Corrosive, that would be, ooh, is this the first one I don't know? No, I think it's mordant. But hirsute is a very fancy word, meaning hairy. Someone who is hirsute is hairy. But mordant, they're mordant wit. That's usually the phrase you hear it with. Someone who is sarcastic and kind of bitter, sharp. Not a very common word though. Expressing of irreverence towards what is held sacred. Iconoclast? No, that's not here. Sacrilegious. So you see how the ending sounds like religious, right? Sacrilegious. Well, the sacra is someone who's going against it, almost like they're sacrificing a religion. They're sacrilegious. They're irreverent towards religion. They are sacrilegious. And I've just noticed one of my other favorite words in the English language obstreperous. Sounds so fancy, but it means aggressive, combative, 
a bit like pugnacious, always in a strop, always argumentative, that's obstreperous. But here, being against religion, against revering religion or respecting it, you are sacrilegious against religion. Oh, they're expecting me to type it. Wordy and long-winded, garrulous. Do you remember what that was? Can you tell me? This will test if you remember the words we've learned. I didn't realize this website would do this. Another reason maybe to recommend it. You can test if you remember. Do you guys remember which word meant wordy and long-winded? This will test whether you're really listening. It was verbose. Oh, this is so fun. You guys can actually find out if you remembered the words. Oh, this is great. So this is gonna put you on the spot. Do you remember? Because you can sit there listening to me explain these things and maybe how many words are you remembering? Only half of them, right? So this will test how many you remember. Do you remember which word means a situation or predicament from which disentanglement proves difficult, like a swamp or a marsh? That's quagmire. There we go. So did you remember that one? Let's do next. In disorder, unkempt, disarranged, not keeping themselves clean and shaven. Do you remember that one? Disheveled. As for spelling it, is it two L's or one? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go with one. I might have just type that wrong. Yeah. To chew, to reduce to a pulp. Do you remember that fancy word? Masticate. Quite easy to remember if you think about it. Masticate. Perfect start. There you go, that was fun. Put you guys on the spot, you weren't expecting that. Fruitless or fertility, I think they meant unfertile. The capacity of plentiful, oh, fruitfulness. Sorry, fruitfulness or fertility. So producing fruit, the capacity of plentiful production. That would be fecundity. Great word and definitely could come up in the jury, means producing a lot of fruit or productive in general, basically. A smattering is like a scattering of stuff, a small amount scattered over a larger area. A smattering of sugar on the savory dish, just a little bit sprinkled on top, that's a smattering. A dilettante is an amateur. By the way, fecundity is fertility fruitfulness producing fruit. Scanty or meagre exodus, a departure that usually involves a large number of people. That would be, ooh, what? Scanty or meagre? Probably, actually I'm not sure. Scanty or meagre, it's not inertia, which means laziness, not doing anything. It's not stigma, which is like prejudice. Attrition means wearing something down. Like that's um, a war of attrition, it means wearing someone down until they give up. Exiguous is a word I don't use very often. And yes, I guess it does mean scanty. You don't have much of it if it's exiguous. But I didn't know that it meant a departure that usually involves a large number of people. I might check that actually, because I've never heard that word being used in that way. Exiguous. Oops. Very small in size, yeah. So where's this whole um, exodus definition? Okay, well, they're not really explaining that there's this other definition. Maybe dictionary.com will give another definition. No, there's no other definition. Yeah, so I genuinely didn't know that it meant departure that involves, I think they're thinking of exodus. Oh, there's exodus there. So why are they telling that? That's weird. Yeah, that was confusing. Anyway, you've kind of got two words for the price of one. Exiguous means scanty, not very much of it. But exodus is a departure that usually involves a large number of people. They mix them up there a little bit. The outer layer of skin to shed or cast off. That would be slough. Not too interesting there. Just to get rid of something is to slough. Get it off, to slough their skin. Anything here more interesting? An axiom is a nice one to know. An axiom is like a truth, something you can rest on. So one plus one equals two is an axiom. It's a principle, a foundation that you can build upon. An axiom, that's a great word. Oh, whoops, <laughs> my bad. I picked the one that I was defining, but obviously I, I knew that 
to slough needs to shed or cast off. Oh well, I knew that one. I just clicked the one that I was explaining at the time. Rapid to apprehend or understand. Do you remember this one? Do you remember which word meant fast to understand or apprehend? It was astute. Remember that ast at the beginning meaning fast? Astute. What about this one? Characterized by trivial fault finding. One of the words I gave you was pedantic, but what was the word they gave? Carping. Someone who is always complaining and carping is someone who's always finding small, trivial faults. Lacking power or ability. Do you remember that one? Well, if you're potent, you're strong. If you're impotent, you're lacking that power. Affected with or coloured by jaundice. Cynical, jaded, full of prejudice. Mm, well, that's kind of easy, right? Because there's a word jaundiced right there, so that's weird. But let's do another one to give you a bonus word. Enamoured. Someone who fancies something or is in love with something. I'm enamoured by the prospect of getting that new car. Or she is enamoured by him. Amour in the middle in many Latin languages means love. But enamoured is someone who loves something, or actually it's the verb, right? To be enamoured, to be in love with something, to fancy something. It doesn't have to be the strongest, most passionate love. It can just be like fancying something, to be enamoured by something. The outer layer of skin, we knew that one, that was slough. Ornate decorative. I mean, that's quite fancy. Wouldn't come up too often in the GRE, but the answer here would be Rococo because it's a style, as you can see in the picture, of being very ornate, over the top, decorative when you're decorating a room. Any other word here worth knowing? Evasive means avoiding things, getting out of things, avoiding your responsibilities, maybe, avoiding the answer, being evasive. Peculiarity or quirk in one's given disposition or behavior, being weird basically. That's an idiosyncrasy. Great word, definitely could come up in the GRE. An idiosyncrasy is something that's unique to you. It's almost got your ID on it. So see it begins with ID. It's unique to you, it's something you do. It's a peculiarity or quirk that you do, it marks you out. Maybe you say a certain phrase a lot, you could call that your idiosyncrasy. Or if you have a certain pattern of behavior that you always repeat, that's an idiosyncratic behavior because it marks you out. It's something odd and interesting and fun that you do that sets you apart. Caustic or sarcastic, corrosive. Do you remember that word? It was a hard one. We didn't spend long on it. It was mordant, the mordant wit, being very sarcastic, corrosive. You might have thought sardonic, so it marks to you if you thought that because that also means sarcastic. Inclined to or expressing nausea, being queasy. If you're queasy, you're feeling quite ill. You're experiencing nausea. Person who has abandoned his or her political party, do you remember that? They've left the state of being religious. They are an apostate. The outer layer of skin, that's slough. Slough off something. Expressing a reverence towards what is held sacred. Remember this one. Not being religious, being sacrilegious. Sacrilegious, if I can spell that. I think it was like that. Ooh, I spelled it wrong. Whoops. Sacrilegious. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced, but I spelled it wrong. Yes, it was correct. Perfect start. Okay, one more of these, and I think we're good to go. To polish or make shiny, that's to burnish. It's almost you're making it bright, flashy, flaming, like burning. You're burnishing it, polishing it. To degrade something, to denigrate or demean. That's you're embarrassing someone, humiliating them, demeaning them. All we'll begin with DE, do you notice? Affected by jaundice, that was an easy one, wasn't it? It's was just jaundiced. Basically, full of 
prejudice and being cynical. That person's jaundiced because they've been working their job for so long, they're just so cynical. Fruitless, I keep saying that, it's fruitfulness or fertility. This is a hard word, but do you remember which word means full of fertility and fruitfulness? Being very productive. That is, you are displaying fecundity. Scanty or meager, exodus. Well, yeah, they mix this up, but exodus means something different. Departure that involves a large number of people, but there was a word that meant scanty or meager. Exiguous, do you remember that fancy word? Not having much of it, being very scanty. Pungent and or spicy in taste or flavor. Hmm, they're kind of telling you the answer here, piquant. Piquant means to be pungent, spicy in taste or flavor. Sometimes you might use the word piquant about maybe a journalistic article that's really, wow, that's a bit spicy, that's a bit edgy, that's piquant. Of moderate or ordinary quality. That would be mediocre. If someone describes you as mediocre, you're just average. Notice how it sounds a bit like the word medium or median in maths. Well, moderate, average, ordinary, mediocre. Great word to learn. Perfect start, keep up. Brilliant, well, I think that was 21 words, but we did at least an additional 20 in extra definitions that I gave you during that set. So if you feel this video has helped, please do leave a like and a comment. Look at this. There you go, it tells you. It actually says it out loud. In terms of social status or dignity. I don't know if you can hear that, but the person's reading out so you can hear how the words sound as well. So a really useful website if you want to learn new words. There's 650 odd words that you can learn and we've just covered the first 2021 in about 20 minutes or so. So you can see you can roughly learn a new word per minute and that's with extra definitions thrown in and being tested as well to make sure you know the word which I think is pretty good. Either way, hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.